Today we're making some rustic decor DIYs. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome! The first project is going to be a faux succulent garden. Alright, I'm going to take some of these little foam balls and this little three pack of trays from Dollar Tree, little planters. I have some rocks. You can use pebbles, rocks, stones, gravel. And then I have a cactus and some succulents down here in this pile. Just to show you, some were thrifted and some came from the Dollar Tree. The pastel color ones were from the Dollar Tree. So you can find these pretty much anywhere, I think, at this point. So you're going to start by taking all the stickers off of your little planter. And they will stack together just like this. Love this. And I think Dollar Tree has two more sizes too, but we're for this indoor decoration, we're just going to use the smallest, which is what we got here. I want to glue these foam balls in place, just put a little bit on the side so that it sticks down and doesn't move around when we're trying to add our florals in there. I'm going to do that to each one. And then I'm going to take a scrap piece of foam and I'm going to stuff that down in the middle of each one because this is going to be like a a placeholder you won't actually see any of this in the middle but I don't want to have so many rocks in here when we pour them in that it's going to make it super heavy just gonna make sure that it is about the right height so not to be too high because then it won't sit down on top of one another and nest down like it should so you see these little slits right here this is how they stack and just to make sure nothing moves I'm gonna add a little Gorilla hot glue in these little slots and then add them down one on top of the other. If they don't sit down all the way, then that means that whatever you're using in the middle is um, too big. It's too wide, so just trim it down a little bit more. Now we have it all in place. Nothing's going to fall out. We're going to start adding our succulents next. The foam that you see there in the middle that's white, it is packing foam from a table. So it's very different. Well, no, I'm not gonna say it's very different, but it's very dense compared to what you get to put florals in normally. So sometimes if you have a really thick stem, you're gonna wanna use a dowel or something about the width of the stem to make a hole in there for you. And you'll see me do that and I'll just add hot glue in when I need to um, to make sure that nothing comes out. Now I'm just going around and around sort of like you do with flower, you know, like when you're doing like a flower arrangement of some sort. And I'm putting these succulents at an angle so it looks like they're facing outward instead of straight up. That's just a look I prefer, but you may certainly do yours any way that you like. Sometimes when I'm at the thrift store, if I find a wreath or a flower arrangement that I don't necessarily think I need or want, but I like a piece of it, I can just pull it out. And by the way, that is not at a regular Goodwill store. That is at the bins, so it's different. You can definitely do that at my store anyway. Pull off the parts you need and just leave the rest. So I'm using that dowel here with a little point on it. I'm using that to poke holes so that I can add a little hot glue and then push those stems in there. And some of these stems on these faux succulents are plastic too, so they're not rigid enough to make a hole in those balls, so just be sure that you uh, make a hole for it, add a little hot glue, and then put it down there. I'm trying to mix up the varieties so that you've got some, I think they're called sedums, the little one, the little dots, little berry looking things. And then we got variety with the donkey tail over there on the side. It kind of hangs down, spills forward. I think it gives it a lot of variety. So then you're going to start putting in your rocks, pebbles, stones, gravel, whatever you're using. You can definitely get stuff from the Dollar Tree. This just came out of my driveway. It's like a crushed concrete kind of stuff. And this is where I mean, you know, you don't want so much in there. If you didn't have that in the middle, those foam pieces in the middle, it would all fall down into the center and you'd leave a ton of rock to cover your project. So I'm just gonna continue around until you don't see any of the white foam. Certainly, if you prefer to use a green, you can. The next project is going to be a gnome garden planner. And don't worry, you're going to see the final results at the end of the video, so stay tuned. Using some of this stone spray, we're going to use this vase 
from Dollar Tree, a wall vase, some Velcro dots, a little yard pick from Dollar Tree. Love them. There's several different kinds at my store, but I like the welcome. Some flowers. I wanted wild flowers and some farmhouse witch hazel. And then this is a thrifted fern piece. I'm going to cut this jute off because I'm not going to need it right now. We're going to have to take the sticker off as well. Take your tags off. We're going to remove the stake from this little gnome. If you don't like gnomes, you can use whatever type of little yard sign you want to use for this. I'm going to use a little bit of cleaning spray just to wipe down the back of the gnome because I don't want to have any oils from anybody's hands, any packaging, any lotion, nothing like that on there because I want my Velcro dots to stick firmly down to the surface. So the scratchy side is going to go down on the gnome. It really doesn't matter which way you do it. You can do the other side down, but it doesn't matter one way or the other. Let that sit to the side for a minute and trim all your pieces off of the little bushes you have. So this is three coats in between. It took me two days to do this because you have to let it dry quite some time. Still don't have the coverage that I like. So I'm going to make this look a little bit older using a natural sponge. And it's a dry sponge. I'm going to use some brown paint and then pat this around to make it look kind of grungy, kind of rusty, kind of old. Now for this, you can leave this part off if you want to. If you don't have that type of spray, you can just kind of dab on with a sponge any type of paint that you want to. I like that this looks either like it is somewhat stone, something that could actually be found in nature, or something that nature has taken back over, like some rusty, rusty something left out in the woods, a rusty can or something. If you get the sponge wet with your paint, it'll be a lighter, more uh, see-through kind of finish. But if you use a dry sponge, you'll get this more opaque finish. Once that is dry, we're going to decide where the gnome is going to go. And then I have, I'm have going to peel off the backing for the little dot. You see there, they're both there. I'm going to add a little hot glue. Look at that paint sticking on it from my finger. I'm going to add some hot glue because I don't want this to come off. And I want to have a really strong hold for when we decide to take our little gnome off there. Now sticking metal to metal is difficult. That's why I'm using the Velcro. If you want to use E6000, something like that, feel free to do it that way. You can skip this. But if you do it this way, you can pull that off and you could actually change your little front if you'd like to. You could change it for the seasons and then change your arrangements. Wouldn't that be cool? Taking some more of that packing foam and my little pull noodle knife from Dollar Tree, which I love by the way, I am going to add a little bit of hot glue and put it down in there. I just trimmed those corners so that it would sit down flat. Now I'm going to take uh, some jute and go through the back to make the little hanger just to put that back in there before we start putting in our florals. Alright, so now I've got these beads. Uh, I think, I'm pretty sure I either took these off of something or I found these while I was out thrifting. But I didn't get them from Dollar Tree. But you use whatever you have. And Dollar Tree definitely has a variety of beads. Some beads are already on the string for you. Just got to look. If you can't find it at your store, check out store down the road, you know. So I like the look of this. I'm just going to leave it natural like that. And then I'm going to tie a knot right in the ends, leaving a little bit of slack so that I have a place to hang this. So now I've got a little loop in the top. That it can be hung from. Easy. All right, well this is my biggest piece and it is going to go in the back. I'm going to press it right down into that very dense foam. So you don't have to buy all of your stuff. You don't have to have a ton of money to buy you know some things. Save money where you can like me getting the foam for free because it was something that would have been thrown away and I just recycled it to use it in my craft room. Cut it down into smaller pieces. Now I have a bucket full of it. Now I don't have to pay for that floral foam. Save myself $1.25 even more because I can do so many projects with it and you'll see that foam in many projects. Then you can use your money for more you know maybe you want to buy a more expensive pick from Hobby Lobby. If you saved your money doing with your foam, you could always do that. 
Okay, y'all, now look at these picks. These came from Dollar Tree as well. I don't remember what the tag said on them. When I grew up, you know I grew up in the South, if you can't tell from my voice, I, we called these cuckle burrs. Cuckle burr, that's what we called them. So when I was doing this video, I looked it up to make sure that those were actually what I thought they were. And do y'all know, the name for these is Cuckle Burrow, B-U-R-R-O-W. See, when you grow up in a certain place, there are things that if you never write the word, you really don't know how you're pronouncing it. You just do it like everybody else does. Well, those are Cuckle Burrs to me. Y'all know how it is. And I'm sure even people that live further up north, y'all have your own ideas and your ways of pronouncing things and... I don't know. I, I think it makes this special. Makes It's different, but different is special, right? So just keep placing down your little greenery and your flowers wherever you like. I love that the flowers that we used match the flower on his hat. So cute. It's coordinated and it makes it look like he's saying, welcome to my garden. He's got all these little flowers in the background. Super sweet. And I hope you like it. If you're enjoying this video I would appreciate a thumbs up it means a lot to me it shows me that I'm doing a good job that you like what I'm doing and it shows YouTube also the next project is going to be welcome tag signs this welcome sign came from the Dollar Tree it came in the little garden section I have some tissue paper I think I got from Dollar Tree but I've had it for a few years and then I have two tag signs also from Dollar Tree. Then I need some Mod Podge. I'm just using matte. And then flowers if you want to use them. We're going to start by taking off the hangers. They just really get in the way and they're so easy to take off. You just press the plastic down through the hole. Then I'm going to use some white Waverly paint. This is chalk paint and this way our project our tissue paper will really show. See these two pieces? They're going to come off. I'm just going to use a little metal spatula here and go underneath and just gently, 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 gently pry these up. Because they will break. They're very thin, but you can get them off if you're patient. Maybe use your a little bit of heat on there to loosen up the glue and then you can get it off. I got it off without breaking it. It was touch and go for a minute though, people. Touch and go. And I did have a little splinter there on the side, but you know, we're gonna take this little sanding fingernail file, and use it for a sanding tool actually. And then I'm just gonna get off any rough pieces. And you can just go over it with a sanding block if you want to and just really get it all nice and sanded. Make it smooth. It's kind of what I'm doing. Just decided to go along, make it all about the same. All right, so now I'm protecting my table and I'm going to take my marker here. I'm using oak and I'm gonna mark off the borders of where that boot would be and also the dividers between the letters. You don't have to do this part if you don't want to because in the end you can cover that up I would not try to cut that out though because it may weaken that word and it might fall apart. So you don't want to do that. When I'm using these paint markers and when I'm using regular paint, I try to make sure that I am going with the grain. It's, it's just a better look to me and it's what I've always done. So now I've done all the letters, but the boot is going to be a different color. I know that the back of the tag sign is going to be white. So that's why I'm painting this little section white. But you can skip this part if you want. And you know, like I said, if you decide to use your repair marker right here, then you can certainly cover that with that repair marker too. I just wanted my letters to kind of stand out so we knew what we were looking at. All right, now I've got some pavement, black paint, and it is like the very, very, very dark gray not a complete black, and it's not like jet black. It's not like ink, like a Waverly chalk paint. I'm gonna go over this whole boot, being very careful between the letters so that I don't make a big mess. 
I'm going to cover this black. You know, if you wanted to do a yellow boot or a green boot, whatever you like, you just go on and do it that way. You could have pink boots with polka dots if you wanted to. Now I've got this light mocha, and I'm going to use this to go over the pot and the handle of my little uh, rake or whatever that is. All right, so now this is English Ivy Green. I'm going to use this for the greenery here. I'm going to go all the way over this. You can choose any color of green that you like for your sign. Or really, you could paint it any color you wanted to. You could turn this into a little cactus if you wanted. Put some little black lines on it and make it a succulent. All right, now I'm going to take this gray and I'm going to put the gray down on the little tines of this first. That'll work. All right, now I'm going to take this silver color, it's like a brush silver, and a little stenciling brush, and I'm going to go right over the end. This way it looks a little bit like it's galvanized, it looks a little bit like a yard tool. Be sure you let your paint layers dry in between, and you can see that that looks a little more realistic. Now we're going to take some dark brown, and I'm going to add some dirt on there, right on the ends like we've been using the tool. Yes. And then now I'm going to dry brush that on the pot. It's just going to give it a little bit of dimension. Nice. I like the results there. And then we got to have dirt and mud on our boots, right? So I'm just going to dry brush a little bit on the boot and definitely kind of pack it on down there on the bottom to make it look as though we have actually been in the garden today. A little bit of mud. It's a lot of mud where we are right now. A lot of mud. Okay, so I'm going to put this back where it was. Certainly you can move it and put it in another place. And then I know I'm a little bit out of view over there, but I got it. Now see, having white on this board is going to make the colors just pop off. That's what I was getting at earlier. So use some Mod Podge on here. If I would have put this down on the brown backing, then it would show that brown through there and it would be kind of muddled and dark, but I don't want that. I want it to be white and just pop off of there. So putting that white paint, letting it dry first, then adding the Mod Podge. Then when you put that on, look how bright and crisp that looks. You can even see a difference on my table of how much darker it is against that light colored wood. Really like the look of that lighter background there. Dollar Tree's got some really pretty tissue paper. Just go look over in the birthday section if you want to, to find something to cover your tags. I always encourage you to do your own thing. You know, I bring you inspiration. That's what my channel is about. I want to show you how you can make beautiful things that don't cost a fortune. And I want it to be something that brings you joy. Always, it's always about the joy. I always try to be positive here for y'all, and I have so many positive comments that I appreciate so much. Feel free to support each other, talk to each other in the comments, encourage each other, listen to each other's stories. I've learned so much from my viewers. All right, now we're going to break out this wood glue. I'm going to add a little bit of wood glue, just using a brush because it's really thick and I, my hands were bothering me, so I couldn't just hold and squeeze that bottle for a long time, so I just decided to get a brush and just brush that on there. By the way, if you're using a paintbrush for glue, you better wash it out really fast or it will be hard to get out. Use an old brush. We're going to put this on first, and then we're going to add some hot glue. That way it will quickly cling to our tag while the wood glue has a chance to dry. Even though what's underneath is not wood, wood glue is a very strong binding wood, I mean, <laughs> glue, and it will work on the wood from the sign. I wanna make sure it's nice and flat. It does have a tendency to kind of bow up this MDF stuff that they use. So I'm just gonna put some heavy weights on it until it's dry. Now we're gonna make it pretty. So I've got some flowers that match um, their leftovers from the little gnome that we did. And we're going to be using these beautiful little 
violet colored flowers and they actually match the tissue on the back so we're going to use these to embellish around the sign now if you didn't want to paint those little sections this is what you could do you could just put a little flower there and you could cover up that little joint i'm going to put one over here too just like that and then we'll add a couple on this plant to make this plant look like it is blooming. I had so much fun on these three projects. Really, really had a lot of fun. All right, so there is that sign. And certainly you can do anything else you want to here. You can add more if you want, but I think this is good. I want to make it look a little, little distressed. Not a lot, but a little distressed. So I'm just going to take this file and I go around my edges. And then I'm going to go over the board part also. This just kind of makes a, a border almost around it. And then you see the little scratches here. Grab a sanding block. You can get some sanding paper. You can use an emery board. You can use a maybe a dull knife to kind of scrape at it whatever type of distressing you want and then once you get it like you like it be sure you wipe off that paint dust also you're gonna lay those down so I know where I want them and then just lift up without moving it and add my hot glue underneath and we can put these together obviously if you want to paint the back to have a finished look you can certainly flip these over and paint the back or cover them with paper but these are going to be at my house, and I'm not selling them or anything like that, so I'm not going to waste my paint today. Now, this is part of a leaf that I took off of a plant, a little uh, faux plant. So I'm just using these little pieces here to add a little something to the flowers. A little vine, I think. That's kind of what it looked like to me. A little vine, a little piece of greenery there. So I'm just going to add that. And see, that's just part of the pick that would be thrown away. Save it, cut it down, and you can use it in your projects. Another way to save you a little money. Gonna add one down here. And then I just want to make sure that my flower is not flat. I'm trying to make sure that it has a little lift away so it gives it some good dimension. I'm going to use some cotton cord to make a new hanger. I'm going to cut it off. I'll feed it through and I want the knot on the front this time so I'm gonna make a double knot right here on the front so that it will not fall through that hole you can put your jute back on if you want to because we're only gonna have a hanger on this white one not on the one in the back see the knots are right on top of one another so they don't slip through same thing over here I'm gonna take that through there tie a knot on the end of the rope and then a double knot big enough so it won't slip through if you take your time on this you can definitely stack those up then I'm going to trim it down just a little because these are going all over the place and to ensure that nothing slips through I'm going to add a dot of hot glue right in the opening there and pull the knot pressing it down into that glue that'll keep those little ends from poking out and I'll keep the knot for surely from slipping through because over time you know maybe the weight of it would pull through and we don't want that to happen especially if it's hanging on a door and someone's opening and closing your door then it might would fall we don't want that to happen love the tag signs and I like all three of these projects. I really could not even say which one is my favorite. I really, really hope that you find some inspiration through these projects. I've got my little stage set for y'all so you can see how everything's gonna look. There's the beautiful succulent pot. And I know that they have like a terracotta finish and they have a gray. If there's any other colors, feel free to comment below. I haven't seen them in my stores but that doesn't mean they're not around. For some reason, Dollar Tree stores have different things in different locations, so be sure that you look around and you go to several different stores if you're able, or maybe have somebody look out for you, because I know that you can do it. 
you certainly can do these projects. I take you step by step through them. And if you ever have questions about something that I am doing or that I have done, a tool that I'm using, anything like that, feel free to talk to me in the comments. I always respond. I always read my comments because it's important to me that you took your time to come and watch my video. I am certainly going to give you a response when you have something that you ask me because I, I appreciate it. If you look here, you can see the rectangle. Go watch that video. Thanks for stopping by.